the platform. Step up and, and speak out. It is a good evening indeed. It's a ZFM Stereo, my station, your station, the hottest radio in town. My name is Larry Quirirai. On this uh, Wednesday edition of the platform, it is election season, so a lot of our discussions here, of course, are going to centre around the events around elections. And uh, judging from the responses on social media today, when we put out this topic, this is a topic that a lot of people are anticipating, got lots of questions. One of my guests is already here. I've got two guests. I know I spoke earlier about one guest, but again, now I've got two guests in the show. But before I t- tell you who our guests are for the show, in case you don't know. Uh, Chivu 99.8, that's where you can listen to us. Kama TV Wange 105.1, Kariba 105.3, Motora Shanga 97.6, Gweru 104.3, Bulawa, you're my hometown, 106.7, and we're broadcasting out of Harare, where our frequency is 106.4. Listen to us over the internet. It's www.zfmstereo.co.zw. Download the TuneIn app. It's available for free, and just look for ZFM Stereo, and you can listen to us live and in charge. Uh, follow us on Twitter. It's at ZFM Stereo. On Facebook is facebook.com for slash ZFM Stereo. Instagram at ZFM Stereo ZW. On YouTube, it's just look for ZFM Stereo. And of course, uh, this show will be, as as other uh, talk shows are available, will be on our platform on IONO. Dot .fm so i know i know dot .fm and that's where you can listen to us uh, whatever shows have been online on 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 the radio show and uh, you'll be able to catch them uh, as a podcast now uh, just to get into the, today's topic just to remind you uh, i'll tell you about the numbers and the core numbers and so forth you can call us as soon as i introduce the topic as the country prepares for the 2018 harmonized or, or general elections uh, tomorrow political parties go to the nomination court to file their papers and the students are, studio tonight i have dr ngulule gosbando who is the uh, newly appointed uh, spokesperson for mdc alliance leader nelson chamisa uh, i'll be joined in a little bit later for, uh, with uh, the, uh, a representative of the militia group called the order of the vanguard uh, but uh, in as far as this topic is concerned feel free to send in your feedback via our various social media platforms on 0731168 um, 0731 or 772 for calls. First of all, uh, Dr. Sband, congratulations on 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 the uh, on getting your your position. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, in as far as the point is concerned, I mean, I think the first question we want to ask is. Do you, what do you what, what is it that you uh, that you, uh, you 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 intend to achieve in as far as that is concerned and then i'm going to have a follow-up con- quest- uh, question after that look i know i'm going to disappoint a lot of people here with this answer i don't think that i intend to achieve anything because i'm an appointee and my job is to speak on behalf of my principal the president uh, uh, of uh, the mdc uh, uh, president nelson chamisa and i will achieve as much as he wants to achieve i will help him achieve uh, his goals and his goals are very clear he's a gentleman who wants to change our trajectory give us more dignity is a gentleman who has um, ideas about growing our economy he cares about the people of this country and uh, the, 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 this he has done throughout his life uh, uh, nevertheless i don't mind that he has lived a lot shorter than uh, his uh, most of his contestants in the in the elections we'll see them tomorrow but uh, I will achieve. I will help him achieve uh, those goals uh, to the extent I can. So, uh, as I said, uh, while they're on, on the way here, the question is: Does the vanguard exist in the party structures? Is it recognised? Uh, no, the vanguard doesn't exist. Uh, the, the the MDC has structures that st- that uh, have names that start with the MDC something. Uh, and if it's and we don't have an MDC vanguard, um, uh, I'm not sure that that uh, is anything that I recognise. So when we see a video of uh, uh, Mr. Shakespeare uh, McCoy, yeah, Shakespeare McCoy, who is the leader of the uh, self-proclaimed leader of the vanguard, yeah, uh, going and saluting uh, advocates now, so Chamisa and Mr. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. Chamisa stands up and acknowledges him, salutes him back. What exactly is going on? Uh, what, what exactly is going on is that uh, 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 somebody is saluting the president and the president recognizes them. Okay. Yeah. Let's be clever about this. Okay, let's be. Uh, the vanguard mm-hmm. says it is, it, it says it's self-proclaimed, uh, uh, self-proclaimed arm of the, of the party. 
As you say, self-proclaimed. Yes, but, so if they're self-proclaimed and there's no validity to their claim, th- therefore why are they being acknowledged, especially but, in such militant manners? Uh, I don't think that they're being ac- uh, acknowledged at that stage uh, when they have uh, self-proclaimed them, they proclaim themselves as vanguard. And I think that you will have, in any organization, you will have people call themselves any name. But if there isn't any output out of that name, if they're not doing anything, uh, about that name, it, it has it has no it, it has no meaning. It is uh, at the point where you, where where where, where you and, and and even if they did things, we don't have to acknowledge them as part of the organization. They are not a formal structure. There are many formal structures. There are a thousand or ten thousand uh, um, uh, WhatsApp groups. They are not formal structures of the MDC, but they are consist they consist of members of the MDC, and they have funny names. Some of them exciting, some of them not. Some of them nice, some of them not. Uh, but uh, they will not be acknowledged as part of the structures of the MDC. So. If they say that they are part of the structure of the MDC, as as uh, as some of them will claim they are, are you saying you're disassociating them as, you, the, as yourself from them, not necessarily as individuals, but as as a collective that they identify themselves as, as an entity? They they, they look. I don't think that they, 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 they would be claiming that they're an entity. To assume that they are claiming to be an entity within the MDC. I think we'll be a little bit mischievous. I don't think that that's what they're trying to say at all. I think I think they they're simply saying that they are members of the of the of the of the MDC, just like WhatsApp groups are. Okay, let's go. Uh, d- uh, there was a video also circulating. This, this like, video is no, no, no. I'm I'm working with you here okay. based on what you say. Okay, a video at uh, the late uh, founding leader of the MDC, Chang mm-hmm. Rai's burial, right? Mm-hmm. McCoy, who is the self-proclaimed leader of the mm-hmm. Order of the Vanguard, is filmed, filmed ordering youths who wanted to burn down the house that, um, that, uh, in which former Vice President Ogazani Kope was in mm-hmm. and t- telling them to stop, mm-hmm. right? He claims he had or received orders from Chamisa. So where is that all coming from? Uh, Larry, look, I know that the, the, the leadership, the responsibility to lead as very difficult the responsibility to lead is something that very few people can achieve Um, and president Nelson chamisa has shown that without a doubt Uh, after having taken over the mdc in less than six months he's transformed it into a machinery that will bring crowds to chiredzi a rural place uh, that will scare uh, the hell out of his contestants okay so he's shown that he is a leader he's shown that he's quite capable and that zimbabwe can count on him but to then say because he's a leader he must therefore be responsible for and account for the little actions of anybody who is a member of the mdc uh will be uh, uh, i think to a large extent very unfair and also wrong and if as a society we concentrate on these things you know you are measuring we are measuring on minors here but this is a, let me finish. Know, let me finish. No, no, we let me finish. That dismissive it about is, two actions. I have. I have to dismiss that because look, uh, uh, in the last six months, Nelson Chamisa has built a machine in this country okay, such well, as we we've not that. seen before, and you do not want to talk about that. No, no. You I want mean, to gonna, talk about. Gonna, you want to talk about. We're going to get there, but the question is, right now, I'm saying. I'm trying to get to get to get myself myself and the li- listener at home to understand yep. the issues. You say, okay. He's not responsible for them, but at some point he can command them and tell them not to do certain things because of the leadership of a machine is created. That's what you say. No, no, no. So what are you saying? What I'm saying is uh, you want you are nicely ignoring some silent points within what you're saying. You say it yourself that they then claim that they got orders from the president of the MDC. That is what it is. It is a claim. And everybody is gonna do everybody's gonna do naughty things. Is gonna claim some legitimacy okay they're gonna legitimize their actions and I can see why they would do that because otherwise they would have no reason to do it they are claiming legitimacy I am speaking for the president of the MDC and I am saying to you today that he did not order anybody to burn any house he will not but that's not he what does I said. not have that, the capacity that, that, that to do that the claim He's a lovely the human being and you know that but no the statement we're talking about he is saying that he was telling the youth to stop so the question the question i asked is related to the the question before mm-hmm. the question before being well they saluted him he acknowledged them mm-hmm. and if i 
by, by, by inference, mm-hmm. right? Uh, this is not even, a, 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 this is, this is basic, a basic, a basic uh, inference that if they, if they come and, and salute him and he acknowledges them in a, in a largely militant manner where he's also saluting them, Therefore, they fall under his command in some sort of way, and therefore, it's 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 not as simple as you make it to dismiss that they g- can carry out uh, commands on their own when they g- clearly, from video evidence, uh-huh. of, uh, you know, g- feel like they are he's their commander in chief, so to speak. Look, look, the, the, your listeners out there will notice that you are creating some rules here, and the rules you're giving me are that if somebody gestures to you and you gesture back then you approve of everything they do thereafter but these are very that, specific that, that, that is not true they, they're not specific these are very they're specific not, not, they that do was not, a very militant video they, the, the gestures do not tell anybody what to do thereafter okay if i greet you and you greet me i'm not responsible for what you do immediately after that and in fact if you're going to talk about the, the, this video evidence that you make reference to it does not tell the complete story that you're trying to paint here it suggests that something is happening. It does not tell the complete story. And after that event, the president of the MDC came out very clearly and the strongest way possible talking against violence. Look, we live in a country, we live in a country where violence in political circles has been the order of the day. And we have one leader in this country, one leader in this country, political leader in this country, who has consistently disworded and discouraged everybody and his supporters from violence and because of that what does section of sections what do sections of society want to do they want to attack him and no. accuse him of violence that is not true but let, let, let but, me let, but, let me define what nelson chamisa is let me define him do not define him that way. But that's there's very no definition unfair. that's been made. Uh, we're just asking specifically about this arm. Yeah. I, my first question for you, yeah. right, had nothing to do with the Vanguard. I asked you what you're hoping to achieve. Okay. And you quite clearly said, not much. Uh, this is going to disappoint everybody. So I just moved on to the next No, one. I did not say that. Uh, no, I did not say that. Except, yes. That's what I did not say Your that. Your first statement was, this is going to disappoint everybody yes, at it's going to disappoint everybody. Look, uh, okay. look. Uh, that's did, semantics. That's semantics. Okay. I was going to disappoint everybody because the question you asked was loaded. Uh, what, look, 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 uh, what, look. Okay, explain uh, how how loaded that yeah, question is. Your question was. is loaded. You're so, you, you, you are asking a spokesperson. Okay, a spokesperson. It's as if you don't know what a spokesperson is, and I don't want to assume that you don't. I want to assume that you do. A but spokesperson. I, but let this me is not finish. about me. This is for the listener at home. I, yeah. The listener at home who is okay, who is listening at home wants to know what you're so going to do. We, we have uh, we have over ninety percent literacy rate in this country, and the people of this country understand very clearly what a spokesperson is. A spokesperson is somebody who speaks on behalf of somebody. And my job at this moment is not to achieve what I want to achieve, is to achieve what my principal wants to achieve and to help him achieve it. I accepted the job after agreeing that his broad agenda is something I identify with, is something that this country needs. And that's what I want to achieve. I want to achieve what the president of the MDC wants to achieve. And before this story ends, we're going to talk about that, I hope. Absolutely. This right. is what, but nice. but the, 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 the core of the questions, this is, a, this is what I... We're not here to argue. And which is why I always give an opportunity. To, like, let's have the conversation. Let's get the conversation going. And going back to where we were, because we deviated a bit from where we, go, go, where we were, the reality of the, for, for the person sitting at home, and not for, 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 for the purposes of me, for the per- person sitting at home, then the question would be, if there are any... Inv- if there, if how do you decide between the two? How do you, how do you disconnect between the two legs? I'm glad we have a person from the MDC Vanguard coming in to come, or the Vanguard, order the Vanguard as they called, coming in. But how do you dismiss the fact that when I see that video, mm-hmm. and look, we, you make reference to the fact that political parties have said uh, your, your, your president has denounced violence. All the political parties have come out and said they're denouncing violence, Right. But for a person sitting at home, and this has been a thorny issue, it was a thin, thorny issue a couple of weeks ago, how do you make somebody comfortable beyond the, the, the words, beyond the expressions, beyond the commitment when they see images of that nature? Uh, do, do you understand that uh, the, the MDC has been at the receiving end of violence for a very long time? Zimbabweans understand that. Our members have disappeared. 
Our members have been killed. Our members have been brutalized. Our members have had to uh, have had no protection from 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 the security sector in this country from the police over a very long period of time. If there's anybody in this country who understands how dehumanizing violence is, it's President Nelson Chamisa. It's not long ago in 2007 where he himself was almost killed at the airport. He understands that and does not condone violence. And to suggest otherwise is not just inappropriate, it is inconsiderate and really unfair. Okay, uh, just going to read a couple of messages and then uh, we'll read about three and then you can respond to them. Um, to say... Uh, someone is someone from Bo- Boxy from Sunning and Bulawayo says, uh, uh, it's Dr. Nkulu joking. Uh, a video shows an exchange of salutes between the party and the group identifying itself as the vanguard when he says the vanguard does not exist within the MDC stru- structures. Uh, let's read uh, one. Uh, can we read that one? No, that's the same thing. So let's go for something else that's different. Uh, did he say is the mouthpiece of Honorable Chamisa? So on behalf of an Honorable Chamisa, is he saying that they're not part of the MDC? or is he saying that the name is not uh, Brian in Blues also goes on to say I've been voting for MDC but our concern is why is it that as soon as our councillors and MPs are appointed they vanish and when we look for them they're in, the, in Harare can they help us if they will if, if it will happen again so uh, let me just look for another one because I'm trying not to get not, not to ask similar questions when I'm, that I'm looking up for over here okay let's go with those two because some, some people keep asking that same the, the, the one question that I asked but also, the fact, what, what is your president saying about the fact that some people disappear after they've been voted in and they now go to Harare and they're not found again? It's a brilliant question from your listener there. You know, uh, this is why President Nelson Chamisa says one of his keystone policies is that when he gets into power, he's going to try and change the constitution and the way this government works such that it has devolved, such that parliament will not be thus far in Harare. It will be somewhere in Gweru. Uh, if, 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 if he manages to get that, that through a referendum. So you have a president here who has already seen that and agrees with the caller that actually you need to have MPs that live amongst the people and have the ability to go to the people. This is why the president wants parliament in, in, in Gweru. It is at the centre of the country. And it means that everybody gets to travel some distance to go back to their constituencies. And because it is equidistant, there isn't somebody who's too far away from home to be able to go back and consult with their constituents. So I think it's a brilliant question. And I think President Nelson Shamisa has envisaged it and has already responded to that question with our smart policy. I've got uh, Zulu King 81 on Twitter says, uh, speak, speaking of you, says, who is he and how does he... Is how does his presence as the mouthpiece of Nelson Chamisa uh, influence positively the persona of uh, of him at large? Who, uh, of, of the president. Of the president. Uh, I think that, uh, who am I? My name is uh, Dr. Ngulele Wasibanda. Mm-hmm. Uh, if they want to know more, I was born in Gwari, grew up in Blawayo. Um, and uh, I'm a citizen of this country and uh, I speak on behalf of uh, President Nelson Chamisa as of yesterday. Uh, how does that help? The president helps the president uh, in the sense that in important time when the president is busy with other issues, I'm able to look at the questions that people are asking, uh, the issues that people want to know about, and I'll be able to articulate those on his behalf. Okay, and um, then looking here, I've got another message here from... Uh uh, just looking at this message here from Ricky, uh, just Ricky, uh, Ricky's message just disappeared here. But what I want, to, the, the follow-up question is, uh, the, the, the question, the second question, you spoke about who you are, but in as far as his, uh, his persona, you say you speak as a mouthpiece. Mm. What, what are you pl- hoping to amplify? What are you hoping people understand more? Fantastic. What is, what is, what are people not really getting to understand about him? Larry, you're a star. Look. President Nelson Chamisa represents an opportunity like one this country has never had. An opportunity that only developed countries have had. There are very few countries in Africa where you have an intelligent, well-qualified individual in their 40s wanting and campaigning to be president of a country. It is only developed countries that have experienced such 
goodness. It is the likes of Barack Obama who was 44 when he became president of the of the United States and in fact became the most powerful man on earth uh, and was the leader of the free world. It is place, you, you expect to see these things in places like France where you have Macron, young person uh, uh, leading the country and the prosperity that, that, that goes with that in that country. Trudeau, you can talk about, about those people. In Africa, you usually see people of um, uh, if people in their 80s, 90s, uh, uh, 70s, uh, as we see, becoming presidents. And the message that we're saying to the people of Zimbabwe is, look at what is necessary. You, want to imp- you don't want to employ as presidents people who have passed their retirement age. And President Nelson Chamisa provides us with an opportunity to elect somebody who can get the job done very quickly, who will hit the ground running, who will be able to sustain the difficulties of the job of a president and will not, by default, rely on other people to run the country. He will run the country as best as he can with the energy years. And the experience we had from the developed from the developed world is is that young presidents also deliver. In fact, the poorest continents in the world are led by older people. And you also look at how our president, President Nelson Chamisa, has surrounded himself with some of the best brains. I mean, the appointments yesterday will, will, will show you that he means business, in effect. Will show you that he's, he's, going, he's moving forward, not backwards. So I say to listeners at home, the election this year is a watershed event for this country. As important, perhaps, as the 1980 election. That's nowhere close to any of the other elections we've had and that we are deciding between a person who wants to take us into the future, who wants to transform our society and our institutions into the future, and one who stuck in the past has written a a, a policy document that has one chapter talking about how he's been in government for 38 years. And then denies some aspects of that government, denies Gukura Undi, for example, and yet celebrates that he's been in government for, for, for the last 30 years, denies Mramatina, denies the disappearances of members of the MDC and the opposition, denies the human rights abuses that have been rife in this country, takes no responsibility at all for the destruction of this economy. A good infrastructure that they inherited from, from the colonial regime. Okay, I get, get you, I get it. you, oh, but... Like I said, we want to focus more uh, as much as, you know, most people come into the studio and want to talk about the other side. I want, I want to get as much as possible about your candidate and hopefully that the person sitting, person sitting at home understands your person a lot more than they understand somebody else. I want you, having spoken so glowingly about um, uh, Advocate Chamisa, I would like us to have a listen to this and see how you'll be able to explain this. Thank you. One has to have a lot of respect, uh, I think, for, 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 for Morgan Swangara and for the contribution he has made in this struggle, together with many other comrades, of course. But uh, Morgan Sangarai was the, 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 the leader in this time um, and has made a lot of sacrifices. Um, but if you look at how, um, if you look at the, the idea that you left such an iconic leader like him and he dies, and then before you even have clarified issues of his burial, um, you, before you even clarify the issues of how his body is repatriated back from South Africa to, to Zimbabwe, uh, uh, you seem to have, the party seem to have preoccupied itself with finding a replacement. And I understand that there are modalities to that. And there are a lot of people giving me excuses here saying, no, look, we had to do that because we had to stabilize the ship. Um, uh, it, but it seems to me as though, uh, uh, as, as an African people, to do that, on the back of somebody dying within hours uh, is to disregard the value of mourning. It's as if we were sitting on the fences waiting for this gentleman to pass on and then take over. And we didn't even take a moment to, to mourn him. We didn't ever take a moment to shed a tear. We were preoccupied. I know there is this excuse that, look, the meeting that, was be- that then selected a leader was not called for that purpose, was called for another purpose. But even if that was the case, if somebody has died, wouldn't it, would it not have been prudent? And I think that should be the case. Wouldn't it have been prudent to cancel the meeting to start with? So that you then deal with the immediate issue of the fact that 
the leader of the party has passed on and what do you do and then recall that meeting after a couple of weeks or uh, something like this is is, is that an argument I, and i know that that this may put you into a lot of uh, stiff corners uh, within the party debate yeah the platform step, step up. up and speak up so that's the voice of uh, Dr. Nkulule Gospanda, who was the new uh, spokesperson for uh, the uh, MTC Alliance President, Advocate Nelson Chamisa. Those words, after the death of Mr. Changere, you were uh, you came out and uh, spoke about the fact that uh, you, you were not amused by the manner in which, uh, if we want to call it, the transition was taking place. This meant you were not impressed by, by what was going on. So what has changed between now and then? I was not, uh, I was, uh, look, at the time uh, when I, I, I uh, made that uh, uh, comment uh, as, a, as, as an anchor of a TV program, uh, I was not impressed by the transition and that's it. But I was still impressed by uh, President Nelson Chamisa. But look, the broader point that that, that clip makes is, is that President Nelson Chamisa is bigger than most of our leaders in this country. Because I know that uh, uh, somebody looks at that and thinks, oh, well, this guy disagreed with what Nelson Chamisa did at some point. President Nelson Chamisa does not hate people who disagree with him. He loves them. After I made that comment, he rang me and said, look, I get your point. But I'll ring you in 30 minutes, and we're going to talk about why this had to happen. We're going to talk about why we did this. Now, that tells you that this guy has a lot of gravitas, this guy has a lot of confidence in himself. This guy knows what he's doing and that this person is ahead of the pack in terms of understanding the value of ideas, the value of a democracy. But in a democracy, we don't always agree on everything. Okay, so We agree on the, border, on the broader questions. Let's look at some of the like, really flashpoints you said. Yeah. The... Because it's all very well when you speak about it, when you speak about someone who's opposed to you or you're not working for at that point. And when you say, describe somebody as an African, describe somebody as, as, as lacking respect and so forth, things of that nature. Like these things, are, these, are, these are things that have a lot of gravitas. The question that becomes is, you, you should say a phone call. Is it just a phone call that changed your mind? It is not a phone call. I still, I still, was, I, I still believe that Nelson Chamisa was the chance we never had. No, I'm saying was this the chance we've had? I mean, no. for, for 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 you to look away I from what because it it is basically looking away. You're saying, okay, this is a guy who does things properly, and you're saying, no, this is not doing things properly. At no, some point. I, no, I say, look, look, I I can disagree with you without being disagreeable. I think a lot of people make the mistake that when we disagree, then we can't see eye to eye. And I didn't actually disagree with what he did because he did not appoint himself president. He was appointed to be president. Nelson Chamisa did not appoint himself to be president. You make a mistake if you make the assumption or provide an undertone that suggests that he did. He did not. No, no, you were elected. He was elected. To, he he was elected. It, we're not talking about undertones. Yeah. Remember, you're talking about how it was done. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. So there are implications in terms of one could suggest that there are implications that, it, that come from what you're talking about when you talk about issues of integrity, issues of, uh, of respect, be, be Africanness, all those things that you, uh, you aspire for and speak so glowingly of. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying, is, this, is it because, what is it that made you look aside and say, okay, in spite of all of that, I'm willing to get, carry on? You are not going to force me to th- see the world the way you do. I will share with you how I see this because I said it and I'll tell you what I said. I talked about the process. I did not talk about President Nelson Chamisa. And even if I did, President Nelson Chamisa is bigger than that. He's a man who has been through the anguish of democracy and understands that he himself disagrees with what he thought yesterday. Okay, he did not convince me that he was the right leader for this country. And if you followed me throughout, you will notice one thing that's very consistent. I have disagreed with the late Morgan Tsvangirai on a number of issues. I have disagreed with Barack Obama, who I supported. I have disagreed with Jeremy Corbyn, who I supported. But I still agreed on the broader issues. You make a mistake when you fail to make a difference and a distinction between something that's minor and you measure on the minor and forget to measure on the measures the fact that one process that wasn't carried out by president nelson chamisa he does not appoint himself he's not a dictator he's a democratic but man. no one is saying that the, the words dictator and appointing himself and so forth are all coming from your mouth i wasn't disagreeing with him therefore 
Why are no, you no, no, why are you pretending that no, I, I now no, love him and I didn't? Oh no, what I'm saying is that you are the one throwing banding about these words. I just asked very simple questions. Mm-hmm. The simple question being, you said, you said, the way these processes are taking place, mm-hmm. and this is to simplify the process, the, mm-hmm. the way these processes are taking place, and uh, things you would disagree with, and things of that nature. No. You know, you say, you, 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 I'll even refer to refer to a tweet in which, you, uh, a, a Facebook post, rather, rather, in which you said that, although I agree with the outcome of the power play within, within following the, the, the death, I disagree with the process in, in every way. So we're talking mm-hmm. about the process. Yeah. So, when we talk, we're talking about the way you say that there's, when you look at uh, whoever you decide you, with their power play and so forth, you agree with how they, how they ended up in, in their position. Of your opponents, you, you speak a lot more about what they've done before. And they will also talk about their processes. So I'm saying, how is it that you're able to say you're fine with this process, but not some, someone else's process? Larry, Larry, look, uh, uh, I find that interesting. Do you know why? Mm. It, is, it is because you're trying to mix orange, to, 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 to describe oranges and lemons and describe them as one thing. They're two different things. I am not the spokesperson of the process. I didn't say that. I am, I'm, I'm asking let, you to let, be let accountable finish. for your words, yeah, not yeah, the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where does the process come into trying to define my role as the spokesperson? It doesn't. You're, you're bulldozing it in there. Does no, it serve a particular narrative? No, it doesn't. But as a matter of fact, it still it, doesn't matter. But the, but no, it, it, you can't say that because you're saying you said earlier on mm-hmm. that when the president is is not going to be available, the president of your party, you're going to be the, his mouthpiece. So you therefore you are you are attached to him. Yes. So, you, so when we when you and when you said right from the beginning is that me as a spokesperson, I'm not achieving anything personally. So I'm coming back to saying that the person you're attached to, who you say certain things about, you can't suddenly say no. There's a separation. Larry, that's what we still... Go back to that clip, okay? And listen very carefully. When I talk about a process in the MDC, I'm not... To, when you talk about a process, you're not talking about the president. Mm-hmm. I have not said... I didn't say anything about the president. Okay? No, no, no. Let's agree on that. I did not say anything about the president. Mm-hmm. So I'm attached to the president. And I didn't disagree with the president. I disagreed with a process. Mm-hmm. Right? And I say there are modalities that I do, not, I do not have any understanding of. And those are the modalities that I got from the president. And it doesn't mean I disagreed with him. And it doesn't necessarily mean that he disagreed with me. You go through processes every day that you may disagree with. That's the nature of life. But you go through them because life throws things at you. The president may, you will be shocked that it is possible that the president does things that he disagree with but has to do them because that's what democracy calls for. Oh seven three one one six eight zero four five. Uh, okay, this one is from Rick McCauley. says, do, do you still reckon bu- bullet trains are madness? Do I still reckon bullet trains are madness? Making reference to a tweet that you that you made a couple of mm-hmm. uh, weeks ago. It says this bullet train thing is madness. There will not even be customers who can afford the train. That's the first. Th- that's the first when you make an investment. What is the market? There's no use for such a train, even if there was a budget surplus to waste. Look, um, I, I don't think that bullet trains are, are, are madness. I think that uh, uh, you. You, you, you get to understand what the aspiration is. And the president has been very clear. I'm trying to understand. Your statement is the bullet train thing is madness. Then you say, this is like this is so, this is like parallel universe. The bullet train thing is madness. This is your exact tweet. My friend, I, I teach politics. Okay? I've lived politics for, uh, for, for the past. So you, know, you, you can't let, 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 let me finish the point. Let me finish that point because I think we're making a terrible mistake here. There's no uh, terrible no, mistake. No, we, are, your we, we are, we are, we are. We're building a narrative that doesn't exist. There's no the narrative. Art, this is your, let, let, these are your words. The art, yes, these are my words. The art, the art of political leadership. And, and I think that we need to deal with that once and for all. The art of political leadership is the ability to learn from today to tomorrow. If you want to be a leader and if you want to progress in your life, don't get stuck in your ways. You need to be able so to... So are you under- saying you don't... Are you saying you don't believe in that statement anymore? I believe in that statement. So Until... Until... I believe in that statement. Until you've provided the details. What President Nelson... Because President Nelson Chamisa is an acute man. He are you saying you're not accountable for that Let for me that finish. Statement. Let me let me finish. We're you, asking you'll you get to the just point. explain You'll get the point. Let me finish. 
Uh, if you may, I know, I know I'm your guest. Look, the, 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 the uh, President Nelson Chamisa works with facts and figures. So I come to him and I say, Mr. President, how is this going to work? Do you know what he does? He pulls out his, 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 his iPad and says to me, open that. This is an, an, an Excel file. Look at it. Go and sleep over it. I've got it here with me in my car. Right? Sleep over it. Do you know what I found out after that? I found a $100 billion economy. In this country, I'm not talking about the United States. I'm not talking about France or China. I'm talking about this country. And the figures add up. The figures do add up. So in fact, before, as an expert in politics, before I see the facts, before you give me the evidence, I ask for the evidence. And that's what that tweet does, asking for the evidence. And because Nelson Chami says not aloof, he reaches out and says, I've got the evidence. I think, and, and these are his exact words. I sense, that's how nice he is. I sense you are thinking that there's a controversy here. But were you to see the figures? I think they might convince you. Okay. And believe me, you, President Nelson Chamisa will convince every skeptic. Okay. That the bullet I'll, trains will work. Let's move on to it because there's so many other issues that I want to get through to here. What is his view on the land reform program? What was their position of the same, say, 10 years ago? Fantastic. The, the president's view. Fantastic question. The MDC demarcates itself. It's different from its competition. The MDC says that uh, uh, those who have been given land uh, are going to now be allowed to keep that land by being offered title deeds. Uh, instead of being basically lodgers, okay, on, on those farms. So Zanu PF goes through this land, what it calls the land reform pro, pro, pro program, which wasn't a program at all, because programs are planned. You know who's going to go where, how many people are going to go there, how many schools you're going to need to build, and Zanu PF didn't do that. But what we have now is that there are people who've got land, and we want to solve the problem of uh, 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 minimum production in those farms because people don't have capital. And we're saying to every person who's previously voted ZANU PF and is now in those farms, here is an opportunity for you to make real life out of those farms. Some people are leaving these farms that were given to them because they have no utility. There's no capital to, 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 farm, to farm here. Banks will give you nothing for them. And we're saying we're going to give these people uh, title deeds. And when we've given them title deeds, they can leverage them to make the farms more economically available. You can see that the MDC president is thinking about transforming the economy. The MDC president is thinking about moving forward. Is thinking about 100 years from now. Is thinking about how we make Zimbabwe the, the, the bread basket of Africa and not... Uh, no, no, if, if not of the world, uh, you know, at some point we're going to be selling bananas to, 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 to the UK, to Australia and to the United States. Okay, well, I'm just going to turn that out. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get your calls in a bit uh, just now, uh, just as soon as I sort this volume issues out. Is 0772168045. But what, is, what, we, what we're getting around to, to the phone calls, I want to get these phone calls coming in. Uh, the question that's being asked is, how do the parties settle for Charlton Wende, who hails from uh, Marshall and West, when Mukoi, for example, resides in Kwazana? What is the reasoning behind that decision? Uh, look, that's a, a clear misconception here. Uh, and I, I don't know if that question comes from somebody who has understood the issues. But I, nonetheless, I think it's a beautiful question. And, and I was hoping to answer that question. Um, the idea that the party has cycled for Charlton Wende is again untrue, unfortunately. What has happened is that there was a primary election in the constituency. And after three attempts, uh, the uh, primary election was not successful because it was disrupted by one of the candidates and uh, after that the decision was made that the candidate who was disrupting the primary elections not allowing them to continue not allowing democracy to to prevail um, would be unable to disqualify themselves by that by doing so and therefore that left us with one candidate and when there is one candidate that's uncontested that candidate becomes the default candidate so to say that the party circle for we circle for anybody that democracy gives us and then there's also issues issues rather around the alliance for example the, the alliance's candidate in uh harare east is uh, uh tenai bt and it appears also somebody standing on the mdct ticket what's happening there uh, we, we we are not there's no the, the the alliance is not standing on the mdct ticket we're standing on we're standing in as the mdc alliance so if there's somebody standing as MDCT, 
they certainly are representing the candidates that are being approved by our processes. Okay. Are you suggesting that there are people who are going to be who are from the party who are going to stand on their own on their own and not necessarily under the the how, of how alliance? Am, how am I to know that uh, who from which party anybody who comes and says they're standing as MDCT are? Oh, the the Zach knows that uh, no one from our party uh, is standing as MDCT. No one is. And I wouldn't know who this person or these people are who are standing on the MDCT ticket because obviously they are not uh, running under our systems. Okay, let's get this call coming in. Uh, you're live on ZFM Stereo. What's your name, contribution, and where you're calling from? Okay, seem to have lost that call. Uh, further to that question because I, I really want to get as many calls coming in right now. I want to, uh, okay, that call is coming in now. You're live on ZFM Stereo. What's your name, contribution, and where you're calling from? Hello? Okay, can you try and call again because you're, 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 very, you're very low. We can barely hear you. Okay, uh, uh, okay so, sorry, we had to cut that call because we couldn't hear them and it, it just, it's just not, it doesn't make for good radio. So get in touch with us. Try again if you're trying to call us on 0772-168-045. We're here in the studio until uh, half past the hour. You're live on ZFM Stereo. What's your name, contribution, and where you're calling from? Okay, unfortunately, that call seems to be... Okay, let's try and, let's try and listen to you. Maybe we could... Hello? We, we, we can barely hear you on radio, unfortunately. Can you try another phone, perhaps? Can you try another phone, perhaps? We can barely hear you. Get in touch with us. Our WhatsApp number is 0731-168-045. Our call-in number is 0772-168-045. Uh, someone says, um, is it the same person? No, it's a different person calling in. Let's try and get this call. You're live on ZFM Stereo. What's your name, contribution, and where you're calling from? My name is Philip uh, uh, Let's see. I'm, uh, you're live on ZFM Stereo. What's your name? Okay, I'm not sure if the, every call that's coming in has got bad sound, or is it on our end? Uh, okay, we've got the techie coming in to have a look. So just give us give us like a minute or two, and I'm going to ask this question. What is the MDC going to do, given that after the March uh, for electoral reforms, ZEC seems to be reluctant in terms of implementing demands from the MDC alliance? Uh, look, um, uh, the people of Zimbabwe have been subjected to rigged elections uh, time and time again. Uh, and I think that uh, the uh, president is uh, looking at that uh, and will soon make a statement about uh, uh, what uh, response will be given. Uh, look, it is not the MDC that requires that these elections be legitimate. It is the current government. The current government needs to be legitimate because we know that uh, they are not in office, they did not come to office via an election, um, and that the constitution does not provide for uh, usurpation of power or gaining of power in any other ways other than through a constitution uh, or an election. So, the, so you're saying, as far as the MDC is concerned, we're going to wait for a statement uh, soon? I'm not saying we're going to wait for a statement. I'm saying that the president is working on this. The president okay. has, has a team that's stationed Listen. at ZAC to make sure that they uh, follow the law and that they uh, make sure that the election is as transparent as possible. Let's try and get call. this call coming okay. in. Okay, we just lost that call. I was trying to sneak that call in. So to get, that's why I asked that question. So you could get them. Okay, got another call coming in. You're live on ZFM Stereo. What's your name, contribution, where are you calling from? Hello? Yes. Yeah, Kadoma. What's your contribution? Sorry. Yeah, that is how I Okay, so i am all right. Thank you for your contribution. Uh, that question, where is the $100 billion going to come from? The $100 billion is coming from uh, our economy. We are uh, 
uh, going to leverage our resources. Uh, we are going to be looking at uh, developing secondary uh, secondary industries rather than entirely relying on primary industries. And uh, we are leveraging uh, whatever resources we have with the international world. Uh, President Samisa is aware that this country has a lot of resources and that if they are uh, acquired appropriately without corruption. Uh, remember, we just lost 15 billion, and and, and certainly um, um, we could make a, 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 the same amount in a short period of time. We have the resources. Oh, okay. Um, uh, just joined in the studio right now. Uh, we've been waiting uh, th- th- uh, for a representative of the. Uh, okay. Uh, well, while he settles down, let's try and get this call coming in. Yeah. You're live on ZFM Stereo. What's your name, contribution, and where are you calling from? I'm calling from Warwick. Okay, what's your contribution? And please turn down your radio. Okay, I'm turning down. The answer that is for me, the NBC knows you lose at the one is in the team. In the time, you're running over Sita, my things like this. In the time, you're running over Sita, my campaign. They should show their potential. Kutikana, I think was Peter. We are pleased with that. Kanavaka mbo Peter Jersey. Then Kanavaka Pinda tunengita ame more of it. Unlike punishing. Waga punisha. I don't know. Maybe more ni roangu and don't know the singer's weight. Okay. To to uh to uh Saka. So. Ahora, so there, that great, someone, uh, someone's asking, Kuti, what, uh, it, it, you know, the story of the sanctions is like, uh, you, you go and you can keep asking for sanctions and punishing the people that you're trying to, to, to assist. That question that's being asked. I, I think that, um, I don't know that that question uh, is one that the, the MDC has to ask, has to, has to answer, or, or that um, uh, is, 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 is something that we can do anything about. I think that what is uh, uh, important is that we live in, an inter- in a world with other countries and that we have a duty to follow the, the, the international norms. We have a duty to follow international treaties. We have a duty to, to respect human rights. And that thought, when those are not respected, the rest of the world is going to respond to that. I will tell you, uh, uh, and I will tell the listener, Kuti, um hospitals a place where you got to die not go, go, go to get served because there's no medication there are no there are, there are no healthcare professionals and uh, we have our own healthcare professionals leaving this country to go and work in other countries so we have a real crisis here and we have more people who have died in this country as a result of lack of resources than we've had dying as a result of, of anything. And, and what's wrong with this government uh, and the past ZANU-PF government simply doing things the right way? Kill nobody. It's as simple as that. Yeah, I hear you. But the question being, we're saying we're not part, the, the last part of the, 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 the caller said, mm-hmm. the, 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 you, you quite rightly say we live in a, in a world of a, a community of nations. Yeah. And if it's being seen by by the public as if the party is encouraging the international community to punish Zimbabwe, how do you expect them to feel that they can support uh, I, I don't think that it's being seen by the public as that. I think that ZANU-PF uh, spins that message because it wants to run away from the fact that we don't have it tied much today. I think that is more important. I think that I will do anything I can if uh, that would help us push any government to bring back a person who has disappeared under that system, to investigate that seriously. I think that um, uh, if there are 2,000 people that have been gil- killed, I will do everything I can. And I, who am I to decide who has to leave and who, who doesn't have to? Why should the ZANU-PF government have decided who had to leave and who didn't have to? And the international committee is within its rights to demand that that never happens again. This is 2018. We're not, we're not living in... 
in, in 1843. I'm going to, to welcome uh, the uh, order of the Vanguard's Information and Publicity Secretary, uh, Mr. Colin Escuta. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Okay, the question I'm going to ask is a question that, that I asked earlier. Is the Vanguard part of the NBCT uh, structures? Yes, um, the Vanguard is not a semi-detached or a detached unit from the entirety of uh, MDC. It is, but um, suffice it to say that I, I must mention uh, that there's been a lot of hype in the media and lots of things that have been said about the Vanguard are not quite correct. And obviously it has uh, had suffered a, a, a negative image. So basically the, the, the Vanguard uh, on, on principle it's 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 uh, it's it's the whole idea of the vanguard it is not a principle that uh, can sorry okay yes it's not a principle that that has to be taken credit by the mdc or anyone but it's, it is a principle that is uh, that goes back into history as far back as the bolshevik movement it's a borrowed principle so it is not only uh, Vanguard. Vanguard does not only have anything to do with the MDC, but I'm talking about, uh, about the Vanguard in terms of its ideology. The, the whole point of the Vanguard is to instill a sense of accountability and responsibility, more like Gwararem Sangano for, 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 for our party members, because apparently we have new membership that are coming in, and uh, they do not know uh, what the movement is all about. Some of them are actually coming from uh, ZANU PF and all other political parties, and because of uh, the, the, the the DNA, the political DNA that is in our people, it is that of violence, uh, that of not being able to understand uh, ideology. So the vanguard is all about that. We are baptizing people in, into democracy. That's what the vanguard is all about. So, in a nutshell, I'm saying the vanguard is not a detached. A, a, a unit from the MDC. It is actually part of the MDC. It's part of the Youth Assembly, but with the whole agenda of trying to uh, instill a sense of accountability and responsibility in our party membership. They have to know what democracy is all about, what a movement for democracy is all about. And as I've said earlier on, it's not a principle that only begins with uh, uh, the MDC. I, I would refer you to uh, ANC, much closer to home, we have the ANC. They had a vanguard. Steve Biko uh, is one very outstanding example of that because they were trying to instill a sense of black consciousness in the movement. So the word vanguard itself has got nothing to do with violence is the hype you're saying in the media. Okay, that, and that's not the question. Oh, so you, you've explained the role. So are you saying that it exists within the structures of the MDC? Oh, yes. I went further into explaining what it's all about. You know, but no, it, I, I got that yes, part. Yes, I know, yes. I know what, uh, that you're going on the front foot because you mm -hmm. want to talk about the violence aspect. We're going to come to that. We're going to go right, up until right, 9 right. o'clock because we, we we got you in here a bit late. Okay. Is it part of the structures? Yes, it is. Okay. Earlier on, mm -hmm. uh, the spokesperson for the president said it is not part of the structures. Uh, if you want me it's to a come in there, semantics, I guess. yeah, yeah. If you it's want me to come in there, how is it a question of semantics? If if you want yes, me to come is. in there, look, look, I'm not. I've never met this gentleman. Okay, I've never met, met Mr. Guter, but he has, he has put it as clear as it could be. Mm -hmm. The vanguard is not an institution as you would put it across. Mm -hmm. It is an idea, and most organisations have mm -hmm. these people within 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 the organisation that say, when you come in, right. Or when we are doing things, we're going to be watching every leader. We're going to be watching everybody to see that they're doing things according to the book. It's a vanguard. We are guarding the van. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that now suddenly we are an organization within an organization. But that wasn't the there no, is no, vanguard. No, 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 no. Wait, there no, is no, vanguard. No, 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 no. I, we, we had a, a long discussion over this. This is not mm -hmm. what you said. You're, he, no, you're no, hearing no, it from no, host no, no. We're talking about specifically you. No, no, we cannot switch over. Let, let's not have this situation where it's going to be like the tweet where you say, no, I've changed my mind. No, we can't do I that. I change my mind, brother. You can't. I, I do. In an hour. I do. An hour from ago. An I, hour ago. God. An hour ago. What has changed? An hour ago, yeah, you were like, changed? no, the, this, 
these are uh, you pretty much when I ask them do you do you dismiss the vanguard they, you pretty I, much I, say I, that I dismiss the vanguard the organization that you referred to doesn't mm-hmm. exist it doesn't the uh, the organization that you want us to have mm-hmm. does not exist but the, but the but idea I, the idea I that I am the vanguard of an idea mm. the idea that I am the vanguard does mm. exist yes okay so the question is if you're the secretary uh, for information publicity of the vanguard mm-hmm. what is the vanguard if it's not anything that is what I was just explaining. No, what no, he's is, saying that there is just an idea about what is the vanguard if it doesn't exist. Because from what he's saying, it implies look, that it in, doesn't in, exist. An idea cannot exist in a, in a vacuum. It has to exist in people. And that's the vanguard. That's what wow. it is. Larry, we're going to take Larry, a break. Larry, we're going to take a break. <laughs> like, this, this is like living in a time capsule. Oh, and like, like, <laughs> like, we like, can't talk you, of an idea. Like that you, are actually like, deny, you are actually jumping from something you say just a few minutes ago. I did, I did not jump. Okay, let's, okay, I'm going to give you a chance again. We've All got right. another 32 minutes. <laughs> All right. Because this feels a bit like we're talking. Okay, oh, okay. Right. Just, <laughs> we're going to open the lines a little bit. and t- Help me if you think you understand what is being said here. Mm. One is saying, no, we don't exist. Somebody says, yes, we exist. Okay. No, we're just an idea. Right. No. We're within, with, we, we, we recognize within the youth assembly. There's a, there's a secretary general. There's a leader, but there's no, there's no organization. I mean, I need you at home to help me understand this. Get in touch with me on 0731-168-045. Let's get to the bottom of this. I've got, I'm, I'm with you until uh, the top of the hour on ZFM Stereo, my station, your station. The hottest radio in town. You tuned into ZFM Stereo, my station, your station, the hottest radio in town. Get in touch with me on 0731-168-045 and on 0772-168-045 is our call number. I'm, I want to. I'm, I'm going to get to your calls in about. Give me ten minutes. We're gonna. One, I'm gonna give an opportunity for the uh, information publicity secretary of the of a vanguard, uh, which is an idea, maybe an. Uh, part of the structures maybe part of I'm, I'm i'm more confused than i was right at the beginning of the discussion but i'm hoping as we go you're going to help us understand i'm going to get create context so we can understand um the 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 the, the self-proclaimed commander of the vanguard um mr shakespeare mccoy indicated that the party's leadership had approached the militia as as he referred to it as it was it is often referred to to assist advocate nelson chairman saying his rise to the throne uh the what are the details of that of, of that of that conversation? All right. First, I must say that um, we seem to have a problem with with the way we discuss our, our our meta and everything. We don't discuss it from an informed point of view. We 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 we, we insinuate things and we make them facts. But uh, I will endeavour. To try and explain what the Vanga is all about in the question that you asked. No, no, uh, I, yeah, this is something yes. he said on record. Okay, uh, what he said uh, may have been taken out of context. By that I mean, uh, what Mr. Mukoi actually meant is that this number one. Uh, let us all agree to to talk from this perspective, from this uh, uh, point of view that. There is empirical demographic data that proves that the majority of a, 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 our electorate is uh, between the ages of what, 18 to, to, to uh, 40, right? Mm-hmm. So by virtue of that, uh, the youth become louder in that democratic setup. So when he said that, basically what he meant is the youth had a louder voice. In that democratic setup, but whereas everyone else actually participated in that, that's number one. And number two, we have a constitution. We are Democrats par excellence, the MDC. Why am I saying that? We have a constitution, and it provisioned for the National Executive Council to make a decision, which now resonated with the louder voice. That's what happened. Not that he personally uh, he put Mr. Chamisa in the position that he is today. He was actually louding to that, that this is uh, a demographic said work. It's the youth. It's, it's, a, it's an intergenerational consensus. But of course, with the louder voice coming from the youth. So he did not mean that there is a militia. The vanguard is not a militia. There is no militia. We do not have a militia. The only militia that we know uh, in Zimbabwe is a militia that was uh, that still is existent anyway. 
the border case, that's the militia that we know. This militia that you're trying to attach to the vanguard, there has not been any acts that uh, justify you calling the vanguard a militia. Okay, so w- w- I, what do you say when organizations such as the one you di- the the, dis- the one you're disputing of of, of Dr. Kupe saying that uh, they identif- they say they identify members of the vanguard as you call it mm-hmm. who have perpetrated violence against against uh, people and and they identify people we talk about the the, the video evidence from Lawa uh, uh, in as far as that is concerned and they're talking about the fact that there were threats made against them uh, by people linked to the so-called vanguard as you call it in uh, uh, recently when they tried to launch their manifesto uh, what do you say what, what would you say when people people say things of that nature and, and notwithstanding the the earlier video that that we saw where the the your mr mukoye is walking with a sword and you know in very militant ma- ma- fashion for me somebody walks in and here with a sword I, I get vanguard worried because he's walking like a military personnel therefore vanguard no, the question is the, the, the question I'm asking is what do you say to people who see those visuals and have those things being said about you? Because you you simply say no, that's not what we are. But what do you say when people say we've got evidence that you guys are up to these things? Okay, talking about this uniform and the sword thing, I'll put it to you this way: you went to college, you graduated, you put on that black gown in the head, but you bring it to work. No, you don't. So what's the significance of, of, of the sword and everything? This is for, I'm that's asking exactly, simply to understand. Yes, that's exactly what I'm trying to uh, actually uh, explain to you what the vanguard is all about. The uniform does not make it therefore the vanguard. But it is, I had said earlier on that it is an ideology. We are trying to baptize people into democracy, into the tenets of democracy. We are, demo, we are democrats par excellence because some of our membership had actually been baptized in the other form, which is somewhat, well, I have no name calling, but th- there's been a lot of violence associated uh, uh, with, with, with uh, other political parties in, in the country. And we're saying that membership is coming through to us and we have to instill that sense in them, therefore the vanguard. Now, I will put it to you this way. ZANU-PF had a dari regime, but would you say that it, it was not part of ZANU-PF? It wasn't in the structures, but the name existed. That's exactly what we're talking about. Because they are trying to instill a sense of direction in what we are doing. Because we can't just take membership and not orient them in the movement. So that's what the vanguard is all about. It's, it's, it's anti-violence. It's got nothing to do with that. And then coming to the issue of Dr. Kupe and, 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 uh, and her companions, you must understand that these people are disgruntled. When one is disgruntled, it's common sense that they will probably say things that are not even right. And then after that, they would apologize. They don't have facts to prove that. Okay. 0731-168-045. Uh, are they, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, in terms of candidacy, mm-hmm. you, Mr. McCoy, mm-hmm. is he still going to stand for, for parliament? Okay. Uh, that's an issue which is... Uh, well uh, beyond my jurisdiction to respond to but as far as i'm concerned um this is public secret number one kwazana east constituency is under a youth quota that's number one so by virtue of it being under the youth quota it makes mr mukoi eligible but of course as i've said uh, i'm not the right person we have a, a, an elections directorate uh, that's, that is supposed to respond to that and even the leadership higher up the hierarchy they are in a better placed position to avail that information to you but as far as I know uh, and with the information in the public domain which is what I've just said that the constituency is apparently under the youth quarter it makes Mr. Mukoi eligible by default Okay, um, with, the, with the nomination court being there tomorrow I, I mm-hmm. would think that this is something that you would know mm-hmm. but is it true uh, based on certain reports that he went on a rampage, a rampage in uh, disrupting elections in KwaZena East? No. I, in fact, I was there myself. So I will give a testimony that is first-hand. There was no violence that was perpetrated. Actually, what happened is uh, when the e- elections were supposed to have uh, taken place, there were some issues that had not yet been responded to. Because apparently we have a lot uh, in our hands, more bigger issues than constituency issues, national issues. We have a nomination court tomorrow, but look, we also have a high court case that has to bring out results before that 
and the system is deliberately delaying okay. on that. So, okay, okay so moving on to that. Is, uh-huh. We didn't say violence, we say disrupting. Yes. So, disruption could mean anything. So, whatever version of disruption, mm-hmm. um, the, 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 it, it, it segues into a question I asked earlier. They say there was one of the candidates who was disruptive to elections, according to Dr. Dr. Spanda here. Mm-hmm. Who was the candidate who was disruptive to the elections in Kwanzaa uh, East? One of the two candidates. So there were two candidates, yes. um, Mr. Wen- Wende and Mr. Mkwe. The, the, the party has determined that one of the two candidates did disrupt the election. So what are you saying in as far as that's concerned? As he has put it, um, he has put it uh, mildly, and which I feel is quite correct. But getting deeper into it as I'm availing it to you, I was there myself. The, the, the issue is that there were certain uh, priorities that had to be uh, put across in that setup. So we cannot now say there is one person who should be carrying the blame as you may want to hear it from the manner in which you're questioning. You're saying someone disrupted. It, it, It would be wrong to say that. But correct to say that there were issues that were not yet resolved as far as the constituency was concerned. So people were raising concerns. Because because what actually happened is when they were trying to communicate that, the people were waiting outside and they were becoming impatient. So naturally when people become impatient, they make funny noises. Not not violence or anything. Or disruptions. If so it may have the word been violence interpreted. keeps coming from this side of the table. I have not seen violence at all. The question I'm asking is, okay, uh, and we're gonna want to go back to the calls and get some calls in. Uh, so, to, to be to going back to the to, 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 to the beginning now, that is it's come across from here that you're saying there's the youth quota, which he's eligible for, mm-hmm. and. From what was d- d- we said earlier on, Mr. Wende is going to take that seat. Does it mean that Mr. Mkoy is not going to stand for, for Parliament now? Given that the President's spokesperson sitting here has said that uh, a position has been reached, that one person has been disqualified, disqualified for being disrupted. No, 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 no. I did not say one person has been disqualified. <laughs> I said that after the determination that the elections had failed three times, and that as a result of that, the uh, appropriate structure determined that it would be pointless to try again. And therefore, one candidate was remaining. No one was, um, was disqualified because at some point one candidate was remaining. So why did we choose that one? What, going back to my earlier question, why did we choose him, who was originally from outside the constituency when Mr. McCoy comes from the constituency look, that was the original I, I, look, question I, I have not I have not come here with all due respect I have not come here to adjudicate these issues to decide who lives where and who doesn't no, live where uh, I've come it, here I've it's come a here legitimate to give you, question no, you, you gave an answer earlier on no, quite no, freely no 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 you were not uh, look this is not an MDC disciplinary hearing this is a, 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 te- a radio program and we are going to give you the facts as they are we're not going to determine whether or not you want me to get into whether or not into the question of whether or not um, uh, when there comes from the constituency or not. That is not something we can do in this in, the, in this short hour we have. Even with good interest, it's not within our purview to do that. It's outside our, 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 our jurisdiction, as, 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 as my friend here w- w- would agree with you. And it's neither me nor him that will decide that, nor, nor the president. It is the structure and the institution of the MDC that decides that. It has decided everybody just has to accept that that's, that, that's the way it is. That's how democracy works. We're not always going to agree with it. But it, it, we, we, we take the best results out of the processes and the systems. We don't have to agree with all the results. Not all the, f- the, the 500 or so candidates that are standing for the MDC agree with the president of the MDC. Or Mr. McCoy, I, I, I get you, and it's great hearing that. Yeah. But I wish you had said that uh, an hour ago, because an hour ago you said the reason why Mr. Wendy was going was the one, the candidate that was set up for because the other candidate was being dis- disruptive. Even as we asked here, I asked you five minutes ago that's true that and now you're saying no like no one disqualification is different from somebody saying you are now no longer eligible okay Okay. that's different okay Okay, let's get get, said the quick quick question over over to him i'm going to take a call as soon as i get a call coming in 
No, no, you, you were carrying on because it interrupted. Yeah. Yeah. You got it because you were responding. Okay. Okay, I, I, I was saying that, uh, alluding to what um, my fellow has actually said, um, the issue to do with the constituency is a collective decision. It is not a decision that has been made by one person. Okay. Collective uh, would also give the impression that if the people had voted, if the election had actually taken off, it would have been a collective consensus, which is very much the same thing that actually happened because of logistical uh, uh, challenges okay. and all that. So now, having somebody uh, taking uh, the, the, the position of, of being the candidate to represent the constituency, it does not mean that uh, therefore equals to Mukoi expelled or Mukoi being sidelined or everything. There are even better and more bigger responsibilities that he's been entrusted to by the, by the system, okay, by the let's, leadership. Let's get this call coming in. You're live on ZFF Stereo. What's your name, contribution, where are you calling from? Okay, I'm Petronella Emino from Park. Um, to talk about the matter about the matter and Israel, I think the spokesperson for the president is right. Many among us, the vanguard is not such as the MD. So, how far it is, you can just name out, I could see, just like what happened here. I get what you're saying. Can I explain something to you? For a second, can you listen for a second? Hello, okay. excuse me, excuse me. Can you listen for a second? I heard what you said 100%. What I was saying is that we're trying to find the, the discrepancy between the two, okay? So, what I'm saying is that, okay, if I let's get another call in because I think we've already discussed that within the studio. Uh, you're live on ZF, ZFM stereo. What's your name, contribution, and where you're calling from? Hello, you're live on ZFM Stereo. What's your name? Uh, where are you calling from? And what's your contribution? Hello, I'm calling from Guru Elan. Uh, please go ahead with the contribution. Hello. Yes, please go ahead. You'll get their point. So don't force them. Okay. Can you try? Okay, we can't hear you properly. Can you try calling again? Did you Did you hear what they were saying? Okay, I, I got barely. Okay, what, what, what? Well, what we're saying is that uh, don't force us to say what we what you want to hear from us. Okay, let's see what this. Accept it. You're live on ZFM Stereo. What's your name, contribution, where you're calling from? Yeah. Hello, uh, you, you, the line is very bad. Okay, what's your contribution? Yeah, you know what, I'm a musician to Chamisa lying, but this guy is uh, in the studio Hello, um, your, your call is breaking. Can you, can you, okay, let's try and hear you again. 
He lies, he's convincing. But this guy he trying to tell us, still, uh, uh, I mean, uh, it's still, it's a uh, uh, I've been listening and, um, you know, uh, I'm actually, I feel like throwing up. Uh, this is a, you know, if he, this is what he is trying to offer uh, Zimbabwe, uh, we've seen the West in Mkabe and we don't another uh, small Mkabe coming in here and, uh, you know. So because, what would you like him to, to respond to? I would like, I, I, I would like to hear him saying, okay, they'll revive the industries. Uh, not talking about uh, these hundred billion whatever nonsense that he's talking about. Uh, you know, we are we're in a situation where we were in ICU. In uh, our our current our economy is in, in the ICU. We need someone who will come up with simple solutions to this problem. Uh, get us back onto the track. Uh, you know, give us jobs. Uh, put uh, medicines. Uh, you know, in, in the clinics and hospitals. Uh, children should have us. Uh, I mean, uh, both the parents should be there teaching the children, get paid on time, this is and uh, all that getting, uh, uh, I mean, they're getting paid. Uh, they are going for what he's saying. Okay, okay. Let me give him a chance to respond. Look, this is a, this, this is, this, I must say, is a great question. Um, uh, when you talk about, uh, uh, what the issues are and I think that uh, his anger is appropriate in the sense that we're busy here talking about whether or not the MDC has a vanguard as an organization uh, when, when we know very clearly I have said that the gentleman here Mr. Guta has said that that it is not an organization there is no inter-organization within the MDC and the constitution doesn't allow that we could have spent this one hour talking about what this gentleman wants to hear how are we going to build the one hundred billion dollar economy in this country and by what time we're going to do it and what modalities we're going to do he wants medicines in the hospital that's what the mdc is about that's what president uh, chamisa has been about that's what he's thought about this last six months that's our blueprint providing the nitty-gritty the finest detail as to where each penny will come from and i would have loved to spend this hour talking about that because really there is no violence organization in the MDC, and you've had it from the host mouth. But if you've done a favor to this country, Mr. So Larry, the, 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 you have, you have, you, just been, you have, you have demystified. Just been, but this is not about me. He's just asked you a question. What is it that you're offering? You're making this and about me, and he's asking no, you. No, no, it, it is about, asking you a question. It is about what radio is willing to talk about. Radio, but talk radio, about you're it. I've willing, just said, you, can no, you answer the question? Mr. Larry, you're willing. You, I'm not going to tell anybody. Uh, 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 that uh, uh, more than what I've said, if you're spending most of your time tra- searching for a ghost in the EMDC, that's that's a vanguard organization that has its own constitution within the organization. So then, it's there, not there. Let's talk about to, the 100, there, 100 billion dollar economy. Said, I Mine want it. you to give me, somebody said on the phone, Yeah. He didn't mention the vanguard at all, yeah. didn't mention any of that stuff. Yeah. He asked you a very specific question. Mm-hmm. Larry. The very specific question is, how are you going to provide Larry. the basic simple things? Larry. This is not rocket science, okay? I am not going to explain a $100 billion economy in two seconds. Okay, let's okay, get another call we coming in then. Uh, you're live on ZFM Stereo. What's your name, contribution, where are you calling from? Hello, you're live on ZFM. Okay, um, Hilary. What's your contribution? Okay, um, first I just want to say, um, the issue of the MDC vanguard being violent is neither here or there, because if it were, we would have had it from the ZRP or the military, so I know they are not violent. But regards the $100 million economy, what I would have wanted to hear from the gentleman from the MDC is which individuals are going to be responsible for that. Um, not only Tamisa, but as he has some people that he's working with, for example, in non economies, the likes of um, the Chanakiras or Simbamakoni or whoever, who are they working with so that we can get to reach um, that benchmark of the $100 economy? Because when it's Tamisa only we saying that, then we start to doubt if he has the capacity. Thank you for your contribution. So, again, that's coming up. I want to hear about the $100 billion. Th- thank you, Larry. Fantastic question from your caller there. Uh, look, uh, uh, President Chamisa is quoting captains of industry, and I will not uh, uh, provide those names, but his own team is made up of uh, 
uh, Mashagada is made out of uh, BT um, and uh, is making further, um, more, more announcements, uh, bringing more people into the team, uh, of qualified people. We know that, uh, that uh, BT was finance minister when we uh, turned this economy around during the GNU. Um, uh, so we, we, we have the people that have shown the experience. On the other hand, ZANU-PF doesn't have a single minister that has ever turned around a dying economy. Zanu PF had all the time they needed in the world to make sure that our our, our, our supermarkets had, had had food on the aisles and they couldn't uh, until the MDC came in. And I'm saying that those people that we had at that time, Zimbabweans have already seen a miracle from the MDC during the GNU in terms of the economy. And we're just going to do the same thing. We've tried it. It worked. We will need to do it by ourselves. We didn't do as good as we could in the GNU because we were being disrupted by ZANU PF. And the president of the MDC, President Nelson Chamisa, is asking for a mandate that will give him total control of the economy. And he is our man into the future. Uh, <coughs> and uh, yes, yes. Add, adding on to that, I think it's also equally important to uh, focus on how things have been run in the country. So, for instance, we, 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 as I was saying about the vanguard, we want to instill a sense of accountability and responsibility. We don't have that in the current regime. Why am I saying that? It's empirical. It's there in the public domain. You have senior government officials being asked to be accountable over national issues, and they say no. That's what we're saying. Before we even talk about who is supposed to be a, a part of the team to transform the fortunes of our country. We are saying how about this? So starting from there we are going to address issues to do with accountability before we get expertise. So how, how are you going to do that? Basically as I was saying the vanguard has already been doing that. Like how, how does it do that? That's a question to somebody to ask at home. D- dispel the, the myths. How, is, how does it get done? As I've said, Larry, I said accountability. We, we, we don't have that in the system. No, you know, it has to start from grassroots. Still the values. How do, you, how do you do it? So someone's sitting at home so they can understand. Larry, can I, understand I can come in, Larry. Larry, mm-hmm. you do that by having people who are willing to ask the question. What did you do yesterday? Where did that car come from? Why are you driving? Why do you have three, four, five cars? Where did you get the house, the bulletproof house that yeah, you have as minister? This. Yes. That's what you do. That's what yes. vanguards do everywhere. You mm-hmm. ask the question, and you are allowed to ask the question. People want to, de- to demonize the MDC for having people within it that call themselves a vanguard. That's a, that is an indication of how democratic we are. We allow people amongst us to ask us the question, to ask us to be accountable. This is what the vanguard does. The vanguard organization, on the other hand, doesn't exist. Okay, um, so before we go, uh, I'm going to ask uh, one final question. Uh, the question I will ask is for just checking this. I'm going to ask one, one final question that I'm going to ask is we, we, we've talked about the hundred billion dollar economies. We've talked about a, a lot of that other stuff that that, that 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 you've made reference to in as far as Zimbabwe is concerned. The final question that that you I will ask is, um, you what can I expect? If on the on on the first of August I've got, I've got a, 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 a Nelson Chamisa as president, what can I expect from day one? You expect a very happy country. You 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 expect to wake up in the morning with uh, a, an aura of freedom. But here's what President Chamisa is going to do: he's going to appoint a cabinet that is qualified, but he owes nothing to that owes nothing to him. He's going to appoint a lean government. So about 15 ministers you're going to get around about that range. And they're not going to be appointed because they have asked or because they've campaigned. And President Nelson Chamsa is not going to appoint just his friends or the people that he's been in the struggle with. He's going to appoint people that are appropriate for the job and are going to deliver on the job. You're going to expect that. But you're also going to expect that if somebody doesn't deliver, and if somebody gets too rich too quickly without explaining where they get the resources, you're going to expect that he's going to be a vanguard. He's going to ask those people to account and be responsible for what they do. Um, and you're also going to expect very quickly 
uh, that uh, uh, the, the banks will begin to have to become more fluid. So you're going to have fewer bank queues, not from day one, but soon after. You're also going to expect businesses to come into this country and feel secure. You're not going to have the kind of uh, investment environment we have in this country where businesses are being invited on the basis of patronage. Businesses are going to be invited on the, on the basis of them being able to competently carry out business in this country. And we're going to provide an environment that does not uh, threaten them. But for most Zimbabweans, this is what is going to be very welcoming. You're going to have a very, very quick action around all the repressive laws that, be, that, that, that uh, our people face in this country. You're going to have a revisitation of the atrocities that were carried out by government uh, uh, throughout the last 38 years. But you're also going to see a president who's focused on the healthcare system, who's focused on our infrastructure, who's focused on a daily basis on making sure that we spend too little on administration and spend more on providing resources. Thank you very much. But Larry, can I say one more thing? Yes. Just to thank you. Mm -hmm. Look, uh, uh, coming to this program, one thing we've done for this country in preparation for Nelson Chamisa presidency is that we've, we've dispelled the myth of violence in the MDC, the myth of a vanguard organization in the MDC. And I thank you for that. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Dr. Nkululi Gosbando, who is the newly appointed spokesperson for MDC Alliance. And also we had for some t time the information publicity secretary of the, of the vanguard, Cornelius Guta. Coming on now is uh, so profound with the love lounge uh, hey okay make his gang signs okay <laughs> take care of yourself and the people that you love i'm back with you next week on monday it's the fm stereo my station your station the hottest radio in town and as i always say at the end of the show where i come from take care of yourself